Hey math students, let's do some more trigonometry. Uh, now, last video we, uh, we learned about what the trigonometric functions are. So in this video, let's talk a little bit about how we use them, what, what they're good for. Um, so I have behind me a triangle. This triangle has an angle here of 35 degrees. And let's go ahead and label our vertices. This is going to be A, this is going to be B, this is going to be C. And uh, so that means I'll call this side B and I'll call this side C. Okay. Now, um, that's all I know. And without trigonometry, it becomes very difficult to figure out, well, how long is this side and how long is this side? Th there is one thing that's pretty easy, and that is, what's this other angle? I know that the measures of the interior angles of a triangle have to add up to 180. This one is 90. This one's 35. So that leaves us, what, 55 degrees left over. So that part was easy. But now let's think about this other part. Let's use, uh, let's use trigonometry. Now, I know the sine of 35 degrees is going to be, here's A, angle A, that's 35 degrees. It's going to be 30 centimeters divided by, that's the opposite, divided by C, which is a hypotenuse. So all I have to do is say, well, let me mul multiply both sides by C, divide both sides by sine of 35, and I get C equals 30 divided by the sine of 35. And you might be thinking, yeah, well, so how does that help us? Well, we got these things called calculators that we didn't have when I was a kid, but you have them now. And this handy dandy calculator will tell you exactly what the sine of 35 degrees is, and it will let you do operations with that. So what I find with my handy dandy calculator is when I divide 30 by the sine of 35 degrees, I get approximately, I'm rounding here, 52.3 centimeters. So cool. This number right here is going to be 52.3. And what about B? Well, let's see. Um, I guess I could do the tangent of 35 degrees. The tangent of 35 is going to be opposite over adjacent. So the tangent of 35 is 30 over B. And by using the exact same process I did before, I can say, well, B then equals 30 divided by the tangent of 35. Take my handy dandy calculator. By the way, with your handy dandy calculator, most calculators have uh, two modes. Some have three modes. You can choose radians or degrees, and if there's three modes, you can also have gradients. I, I never use gradients. I always use either radians or degrees. We're using degrees here. The only difference between radians and degrees, it's a different way to measure the angle. Okay? Just like there's different ways of, ways of measuring distance. You can use miles or kilometers. There's different ways of measuring my height. I can use centimeters or inches. Uh, we can use radians or degrees to measure angles. Let's stick with degrees right now, just because that's what we're used to. Uh, later on, we're going to move into radians. So with your calculator, please make sure that the mode of your calculator is on degrees. If you're not sure how to do that, I don't know, ask somebody. So anyway, let's get back to uh, uh, 30 divided by the tangent of 35. What I get from my handy dandy calculator is 42.8 centimeters. So that means this B is 42.8. And now I have all the information I want to have about my triangle. Now you may be saying to yourself, hey, this is a right triangle. Can we uh, do the Pythagorean theorem and see if it works? I don't know. Let's check it out. Let's see if it does. Uh, let's see. 52.3 squared. With my handy dandy calculator, that tells me it's 2,735 and what? And 0.29. Okay. And then I'm going to do 42.8 squared plus 30 squared. And what does that get me? It gets me 2,731.84. And if I divide those, I get a difference of 3.45. Well, that's not exactly right, is it? Okay. Now, why is it not exactly right? Because we rounded. Okay. When you round, Round means accept a small error. So when you round, you are accepting a small error. Well, 
Out of 2,700, our error is 3.45. I'd say that's small. So I'm good. I think this is, uh, I think this is good. Had we taken it out to more decimal places, the error I'm sure would be much, much smaller. Okay, let's do another one. Let's get rid of this. Okay, and this time we're gonna do, let's do a triangle that looks kind of like this. Uh, right angle, and we're gonna have 25 here, 10 degrees right here, and that's all we know. That's the only thing we know about this triangle. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, label our uh, vertices. We'll call this one A, we'll call this one B, and we'll call this one C because that's just kind of what we're used to doing. And if this is C, that means this must be C over here. And if this is A, that must be A over here. Okay, now, how to find the other sides. Well, let's see. Uh, I have 10 degrees here. Oh, by the way, my other vertex, I can figure out what this angle is pretty easily. 90 minus 10, 80 degrees. Okay. But let's, let's keep on using 10 degrees as our angle of reference. So 25 is my adjacent side for 10 degrees. So I know that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that means the cosine of 10 degrees will be 25 over C, which means C is 25 divided by the cosine of 10 degrees. And again, grabbing my handy dandy calculator, that's gonna tell me 25.39, uh, what do we say? Let's call these inches, okay? So C is 25.39 inches, just barely bigger than that leg, which at first that seems kind of weird, but when you think about it, a 10 degree angle is a very small angle, so actually that makes sense. Now what about this other side here? This is the opposite, and we know the adjacent, so with opposite and adjacent, let's use tangent because the tangent of 10 degrees is going to be opposite, that's A, over adjacent, that's 25. Multiplying both sides, I get that A must be 25 times a tangent of 10 degrees. Grab my calculator again, and then 25 times a tangent of 10, degree, of 10 degrees is 4.41 inches. So this is 4.41 inches. And now I have all the information about my triangle again. And again, if we use the, uh, uh, the Pythagorean theorem and we find 25.39 squared and we subtract 25 squared, which is 625, and then we subtract 4.41 uh, squared, what we're going to find is the difference is going to be much, much smaller this time. It's less than one. Uh, I'm going to let you do that for yourself. Okay, let's do one more. One more example, and this time we're going to have a triangle whose, uh, I'm not a great artist, so my triangles are never drawn to scale. So just keep that in mind, okay? So this is going to be 9, and this is going to be 7, and we'll say that this is A and this is B, okay? So no angles this time. Dang. Okay, uh, but I can figure out what the hypotenuse is by using the Pythagorean theorem. So let's go ahead and do that. So nine squared is 81, uh, seven squared is 49. If I add that up, I get 130. And so I get the square root of 130. And let's simplify that. 130 can be divided by, nope, we're not gonna simplify that because it's not a multiple of any perfect square. A hundred and, square root of 130 is as good as we can get if we're gonna write that exactly. If we're not gonna write it exactly, if we're gonna uh, uh, put approximately what it is, it's gonna be, I'm gonna let you do that yourself. It's gonna be 11 point something. Um, okay, so how do we figure out what this angle is and what this angle is? Well, I know that the tangent of angle A is opposite over adjacent. That's gonna be nine over seven. But how would I find the angle? I know what the tangent is, but I don't know what the angle is. Well, 
on that same handed handed calculator that you have, you're going to see something that looks like this. Tangent, it looks like tangent to the negative one power. That's not actually what it is though, okay? In the future when I'm in charge, the notation's all gonna be different, but alas, we're in the present, I'm not in charge, so this is the notation that we have. This means inverse tangent. It's kind of like the inverse function, the f with the, the negative one. It doesn't mean to the negative one power, it means you're undoing what you were doing before. So that's exactly what we're doing. The inverse tangent of nine over seven is gonna get us angle A, okay? If the tangent of A is nine over seven, then the inverse tangent of nine over seven is, is uh, A. Now, uh, let me just tell you real fast, there is an archaic way of writing this, uh, an antiquated way, a way that we don't use anymore, except a lot of people still do, and that is to say arc tan of nine over seven is A. Other than right now, you're never gonna see me writing anything like that. However, you might see it in some math books, you might see it in some papers, know what it means if you see arc tan. It just means the inverse tangent. That's all it means. Especially in, uh, uh, I think uh, when you're using, uh, when you use uh, Microsoft Excel, the, the function for the inverse tangent is actually a tan, for this, which stands for arc tan. I find that annoying, but hey, what you gonna do? Okay, inverse tangent of nine over seven. So what do I do? How do I use that? Uh, well, I look it up and I see that that is, uh, can you see that? I'm, let me write it down here. So the inverse tangent of nine over seven is, what is it? It is 52.1 degrees. So that means that this angle right here is 52.1 degrees. And if I wanted to find angle B, well, the tangent of angle B is seven over nine. So let me just take the inverse tangent of seven over nine, and that's gonna get me 37.9 degrees. Did I get that right? Yes, I did. Okay. And then after I, uh, after I find the inverse tangent of seven over nine, and I write 37.9 degrees here, I think to myself, silly man, I could have just done 90 minus 52.1 and gotten 37.9 that way. But still, it's kind of nice to, uh, to verify and see, yep, sure enough, those are uh, uh, um, complementary angles just like they should be. Okay, this is how you do right triangle trigonometry using, uh, or this is how you complete right triangles using trigonometric functions. Now you may be thinking, yeah, but there are lots of triangles that aren't right triangles. Well, you can also use trigonometric functions to solve those triangles as well. And if you're wondering how to do that, then look up law of sines and law of cosines and see how that's applied. Okay, until then, see you later.